20 minutes until 10 o'clock, 92.1 WROI. WROIFM.com, streaming audio live on RTC Channel 4. Audio and soon to be video as well on RTC Channel 4. I should say Channel 4. Channel 5 is what we're streaming the audio on. Anyway, Scott's in the studio and he can straighten me out. Hi, Scott. How you doing? Good morning, Tom. Uh, hi. Yeah, I know it's confusing these days, right? <laughs> Four is video, oh, five is the scroll. Only for me, Scott. <laughs> only for me. And of course, if you have a smartphone, you can download the TuneIn Radio app. And take us wherever you're going. We welcome Brian Johnson to the studio from the Fulton County Community Foundation, a branch of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Hi, Brian. Good morning, Tom. Nice to have you back with us. I think, can we say summer has officially arrived? I sure like and, to. And we have spring. I I'm sure still like to. trying to figure that out. We're going to have some uh, warm temperatures yeah. next 10, 15 days. Not it's, too bad a deal. It's a pretty day out there. Yes, it is. Very nice so far. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of things going on at the foundation you right now. You always do, so um, bring us up to date. Of course, I'd like to start off the program by saying congratulations to the class of 2016. Um, the last couple of weeks I've had the opportunity to share um, at some scholarship um, awards night um, at Caston and Rochester and Tippecanoe Valley and, and congratulations to those seniors that, that have worked so hard. It's, it's always impressive. We went to Rochester on Friday night and it was pretty much two hours of wall-to-wall -wall awards and scholarships and it's pretty impressive when we look at what our community does and um, how we support students that are pursuing education and just general the the community support it's always a pretty impressing and, and very humbling evening to be a part of so congratulations Excellent. to all the students um, we hope these help inspire you to complete the education that um, you're seeking and and add back to our society and, and congratulations. So, um, to that note, we do have a couple of scholarship applications that are available. And okay. I've mentioned these before, the Ginger Miller Higher Education Scholarship and the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship. Um, both those are available on our website, nicf.org. And um, the deadline for both of those is July 1st. So if you are studying at some graduate level or um, planning to go to law school, um, we'd love to see an application from from you. So, um, and just a reminder to those students who received um, scholarships, our scholarship coordinator Allison Heidi will be sending out um, some email vouchers for students to complete um, so that they can um, receive their scholarships. So if you get that, um, please pay attention to that. Don't put that through the junk mail because that's kind of important information for us to know and also for your school to know um, when we get the payments ready to go. We need to know where to send them and, and how to pay for those. So, Something else that is a little bit new this year, um, Lilly Endowment has announced that they're changing the timeline on their scholarship. So we know that Fulton County will have one recipient in 2017, for the 2016-17 school year. In the past we've always selected that right around the first of the year. Um, this year, the apps are going to be available on our website starting in August. Um, and then our, our selection will actually be due um, in September. So Lily moved that time frame up because they want students to be able to have a choice. We often hear students say, well, I'd like to go to this school, but I can't afford it. Well, if they know in October or November they can start sure. making those plans um, to be able to go to a school because we we've had a, a string of of students going to Purdue um, which which is a wonderful school um, but in the past we've had students that say well I want to go to Purdue because I can afford that but if I really have a choice I'd like to be able to go to Rose Holman sure. or Butler or a school that may not be quite as affordable um, and so Lily has changed that process so keep your eyes open um, again, starting in, in early August, we'll have those applications available and we'll have more information coming out um, to let folks know. It also helps students so they um, don't have to, if they receive the Lilly Scholarship, they don't have to go through our regular scholarship process. So um, a really good change, just a little bit change in timeline and to pay attention to. So um, Something else, we've been talking a little bit, of course, we went through um, Lilly Endowment, they had the Gift 6 matching program, which Fulton County was successful in raising all $500,000 for. And so now we're to the point where we're able to give out some grants. 
um, our community support grants and we just recently awarded a couple of community support grants um, the Fulton Softball League for the girls softball down in Fulton um, of course they have a diamond down in the Liberty Township Park that they have played on um, they are needing to make some improvements for both safety and accessibility to the dugouts and also make some revisions to the field to bring them up to standard for um, for the new for some new softball rules um, so they were actually awarded a grant of six thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars to help them make these improvements and safety upgrades um, so congratulations they have a good program going down there and some folks that are involved in that that really want to see um, that program expand of course they've been able to um, coordinate with some of the other areas Akron and Rochester and I believe Argus and I'm not sure about Culver but playing some interleague games so having having a good program there allows them to to play more ball throughout this throughout our area so um, another one is the Fulton County Youth Leadership Academy of course this project came out of the Adult Leadership Academy and has patterned very much after that um, to be able to introduce students to not only leadership concepts but some of the things around the community. We hear a lot of students say, well I'd like to come back and live in Rochester or somewhere in the area but I don't know if there's opportunities for me. So part of that program is is the students getting out and helping educate them about some things that are available but also educate them on some leadership skills and etiquette and things that will help throughout their life as they get into a career or business or um, just interact with with people in general so um, they've received a thousand dollars to help provide some programming for their their program and um, some etiquette sessions and some training that they do so um, congratulations to both those organizations you bet. Um, just a reminder of those community support grants this is the first year that we have not had a deadline for an application so if somebody out there is saying hey I have a project that may fit within this um, I'd encourage folks to take a look at our application and apply for that. Um, again, our application is available on our website, nicf.org. Um, community support grants are grants in the few hundred to a few thousand dollar range. Um, stepping up impact grants, um, larger projects, maybe 20, 30, upwards of $50,000 projects um, that are making a big impact in our community. So both those applications are available on our website and no deadline on either of those. So okay. um, we want to try and be able to address needs in a more timely manner, not when our deadline is and make people fit into that program. So, um, so if somebody says, hey, I have a great idea for a project that's happening in August, they can apply now and we can give them an answer in a timely manner and know whether they have some funding. So. So we have today with us um, Judy Climey, and um, Judy has been kind of the driving force behind the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Um, so welcome, Judy. Hi, Judy. Thank you. Uh, Happy to be here this morning. Thank you for joining us. I guess start off, give us maybe a little bit of history about the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. If somebody's never heard about this organization, what is it? Well, it's a, a group of philanthropic women that wish to uh, pool their resources and make an impact in our community. And this is not a new uh, group. It, I just happened to hear about it at one of our service committee meetings back in the spring of 2010. I believe you brought in some newspaper articles at that time. and. Uh, Barb Leatherbein and I were really interested and we asked some questions and we had a meeting with you in April of that year and decided that Fulton County ought to have one of these groups and we were going to try and get it organized so I feel like I call it my baby because I was there from the <laughs> beginning and uh, pretty passionate about it but we were able to uh, invite some women together and we formed a steering com committee and from April till September, we did our planning, got this group together. I don't know if we've got time to mention the ladies on the steering committee, but would like to give a shout out to the Shada Baylor, Carol Calloway, Nancy Day, Lynn Grunlier, Barb Lutterbein, Eileen Howard, Diane Immuth, Melinda Strader, and myself. That was our steering committee, and we met over the summer, made some plans, sent out invitation, and we had our first meeting in September of 2010. So we've just completed our seventh annual uh, meeting. 
What I like about our group is we uh, we have no meetings each month. We have no fundraisers. Fundraisers. We simply pool our resources. The dues are $120 a year, like $10 a month, and we most women will easily give that each and every month. But we make the impact by pooling that. If I gave my $120 to an organization, it would help them. But if we had 100 women giving that $120. So we uh, do feel like we make an impact in our community. And I'm thankful to those women that helped us get that started. And our membership, with, we've ranged anywhere from 71 members a year up to 106. That was our biggest year. We give out anywhere from 5000 to um, $6,000 a year, that's what we've been averaging. The important thing I think about our group is half of our $125 we give each year in grants. We award those grants and the other half, the other six, it goes into an endowment fund. And, and we've only been uh, collecting money, we've met seven years, but we've only been collecting funds for six of those years and I am proud to say that in the six years we have awarded $34,000 in grants to different groups and organizations and our endowment fund is almost $40,000, $39,721. Terrific. So I think that's just wonderful too. Uh, is there anything else? So you these numbers that you're mentioning, you're, you're saying $34,000 in grants and that's coming from each individual member giving $120 a year. That's and correct. Pooling those resources. That's and so that's half of that grant money is half of that $120. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I guess one question I'd have: Are me and Tom eligible to join this group? <laughs> well, at the moment, I suppose we could have a token or an honorary, yeah. but it is all women. We just started with women. We found that uh, women. Uh, tend to be our caretakers of our community. We're more involved in our churches and our schools, our families. Uh, there are some <clears throat> studies that have been done and they find that women actually contribute twice to twice as many organizations as men, uh, but we don't give as, as much usually as men. Uh, we choose an organization because we want to make a difference. Men sometimes choose because they're uh, it's a business commitment or uh, they want the public recognition for their business. Uh, we find women are good stewards of the money. We ask more questions often than men do. We are more committed to the uh, solicitor's commitments. We want to know that they are committed to their organization. Um, who's doing a good job in your community? Who's carrying out their uh, goals and uh, actually just getting the job done? We like to look at track records of groups and organizations. So that's that's the one thing we feel that women are strong. <laughs> well, and you mentioned the annual social. I know that was just held this last month. Maybe give us an idea. You can mention the grants that were made at that program. Yes, uh, we have each year we have our grants committee that takes each year's applications and narrows them down to the top recipients, and then we have those groups come to the annual meeting and we've this year we had three we've had as many as five groups that come and present a three to five minute presentation and then we vote on uh, who's going to get the most money who what group gets second third on down this year we had three organizations that the grant committee picked as our finalists and I'm happy to say that um, of, of those groups that we had um, the Fulton County, the Junior Achievement of Fulton County received $1,000 this year. The Fulton County Youth Leadership Academy, which you've already mentioned, they got another $1,500 from our group, so they've just received two uh, grant monies, which I'm happy about. And our top winner this year was the Council on Aging, which received $2,500 this year. So we were very pleased. We meet, we listen to those groups make a presentation. We also have um, a speaker from a previous recipient come and tell us what they've done in that year's time with the money. And that's always very heartwarming for us and lets us know exactly what kind of an impact we've made in our community when we hear exactly what has been done. And then we have some entertainment. And so it's just a nice evening, ladies getting together with refreshments. And I, I look forward to it each and every year. And it's, as I say, 
that's our only meeting. Yeah. So. And, and I think if somebody wants to see what happens during that event this year, thanks to Scott and RTC, it's it's available <laughs> Absolutely. on their um, video website. Um, yes, we're to appreciative that of that. Event. So we hope that that will help get the word out because there's still a lot of people in Fulton County that have never heard of the of Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. So hoping they're watching that on TV and if they'd like to join us, uh, they can stop in at the Community Foundation office or call uh, call Brian at 224-3223. The NICF office is 223-2227. You're, you've already mentioned the online uh, NICF.org uh, to, to go online and find out. Just stop in at the office at 715 Main Street. So it's an easy way. Um, you can pay any time dues of 120 from now till uh, the end of the year, and that would make you eligible for 2017 to come to our meeting and, and vote. And we're very democratic, one member, one vote. Sure. So it's easy. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share about the Women's Giving Circle? Is well, I'd just like to reiterate that we are a group that makes an impact in our community, we feel, but we're also planning for the future with that half each year, putting towards that endowment. We do. You have no idea what needs of the future are going to be for our community, but we want money to be there to uh, try to take care of those needs in the future. And, and I think one thing that's neat about the Women's Giving Circle, it kind of illustrates the community foundation um, idea very well and the fact that there's a number of donors that contribute to this. There's no donor is giving more than $120 a year, and yet that turns into five or six thousand dollars every year. Exactly mm -hmm. um, for grants. So it's it's a wonderful mm -hmm. program to be able to pool resources and make a considerable impact in our community on on needs that are um, happening right now. So it's the way I feel about it. So. Yes. Well, Judy, thank you to thank you, you and all the women that have been involved in this and. You're most welcome. I just invite anyone that thinks they're at all interested, come and talk to us and, yeah. and and visit. We had some guests at our meeting. We usually have a few guests, and we got three new members this year from guests that Very attended. Yeah. So. So. All right. Well, if folks have questions about anything we've talked about, the scholarships, the Ginger Miller Higher Education or the Rake Straw Law Scholarship, um, or have an idea for a grant that may impact the Community Foundation or want information about the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. All that stuff can be found on our website, um, nicf.org. Um, you can like us on Facebook. We're under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We post information about things that are happening and current events. Um, you can give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas you may have for the community or a way to make Fulton County a better place to live. That's our goal, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. Brian Johnson, thank you very much. Judy Climey, thank you very much. And Brian, before I let you get away this morning, go back to something you mentioned earlier in the program, and that was the Lilly Scholarship and the time okay. change on that, because I yes. do think that's that's kind of a critical element, yes. and I do know there are a lot of students who are always interested in that scholarship, because yes. basically it pays for yeah. everything. It, it Well, it pays for tuition. It right. doesn't pay for their room and board okay. expense. Um, but it does pay for tuition and a stipend for books. Um, the applications for that will be available in August. Um, so as students are just getting back to school, that application will be available. Um, and then the, the applications will be due back to us in the first part of September. So um, that time frame has moved up quite a bit. So um, as you're getting back to school, students, I know you're last days are coming up very soon if it hasn't already happened but as you're getting back that would be one of the first things that you probably want to take a look at and see if that's something that you're interested in applying for go to the so, website right go to the website that's probably the easiest way to do it website or if you're a friend of the foundation on facebook um, we'll have that information available there as well to get the word out on that okay and i know of course there are a lot of other scholarships that the foundation is involved in as well yes. so as the course of the next school year goes on Keep, keep an eye out. Take we will, advantage of we those. will have information out. Guidance offices are a very good place for a resource, um, not only for the Lilly Scholarship and the rest of our scholarships, but also for other community scholarships, um, just general information. We keep them informed and try and pass that information on to students as early as we know about it. Okay. So. Brian Johnson, again, thank you very much. Judy Climby, thank you. Scott, good to see you. Thank Thanks, you. Tom.